Okay. Much better. Yeah. Much better. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but okay, now, go ahead. Uh, sorry. Uh, oh, now, uh, hold on one second. Now, I'm glad because now you confuse me because I wasn't preparing to do that, but. Uh, Give me just one second to get. Oh, through. now you can just use your arrow buttons left, right, just to navigate. Next slide, next slide, if you want to. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, guys. I really apologize for that. Now we talk about Hawassia. Hawassia is a large genus of small succulent plant endemic to Southern Africa, Mozambique, Lesotho, and South Africa. Uh, uh, Hawassia is like uh, aloes. Uh, they are member of subfamily of Asafodoli, if I pronounce it right, and they generally resemble miniature aloe except in their flower, which are distinctive to in appearance, they are popular garden and uh, container plant. Okay, description and uh, character list. Uh, Hawassia are small succulent plant uh, forming rosette of leaf from three centimeter to thirty centimeter in diameter, depending on the species. These rosette are usually stemless, but in some species stems are reach up to 50 centimeter. In uh, the florences of some species may exceed 40 centimeter in height. The plant can grow solitary or can uh, uh, form a clump. Many species have firm, tough, fleshy leaves, usually dark green in color. Where are other softer and uh, contain leaf windows? And uh, we talk about leaf windows later with a translucent panel through which sunlight can reach interior uh, photosynthetic tissues. Uh, the flowers are small and generally white, uh, so they are uh, very similar. Uh, between the species, flower from the species, other species open. Anyway, that's about the description of the plant. Uh, distribution. Hawassia uh, usually uh, endemic, uh, endemic, endemic to South Africa. <laughs> with greatest species diversity occurring in South Western Cairn. Some species do, however, extend into neighboring territories uh, uh, of like uh, uh, Namibia and Mozambique. Uh, by the way, I want to manage to use something, uh, gentlemen and lady, all the, 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 the images here as belong to me, even I still own it or I sold it. And it's only one image or two. Like if anyone want to copy it, I will mention I have no copyright for it. So it's up to him or her like uh, to use it. Naming and taxonomy. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. Hawassia is a, is a genus with the family of Acidolites, subfamily of Acidolites. The genus is named after the botanic, uh, botanist Adrian Howard. Cultivation, we come into cultivation now. No, okay, this, uh, 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 some images I have it uh, from the Hawassia to take a uh, uh, look to the Hawassia, how it differ from one species to another. And uh, 
uh, this species, like the cold house, is jewel of succulent, uh, which is succulent is any plant store water in the leaf or uh, root or stem. Uh, they call it succulent. It happened to be how is your stuck water in uh, the leaves in roots. This how is your mahogany or mahogany variegated. Uh, now I will show you some turn, uh, uh, trincata, and you can see in, in one species is many different between uh, the one species in color and shape. Uh, this how is it in quarter that's another turn quarter that's another turn quarter that's another current quarter by the way the anyhow with here uh, uh images i uh, i bought it have number on it or and name that mean i produce this plant and not exist anywhere else so that's my uh, production in Hawaii Turn Carta. This one of them. That's Hawaii Turn Carta variegated. Another one. That's still a little baby Hawaii Turn Carta. This uh, a great Hawaii. Uh, I own it. Uh, a cool white ma ma white mammoth is a very beautiful plant and. Uh, it is not expensive, but uh, I use it for breeding for a large window and which, which is great for me for breeding the stuff. This is a train cut with some babies. Uh, that's how it's a carbata. This one is bred by a uh, uh, Taiwanese guy. That's another how it's a train quarter. That's another white mammoth. That's another one. That's my breed. That's another Hawaii turn quarter. Another one. Like all this turn quarter, as you see, is different in shape and color, depending on the age and the type of the plant. That's another one. That's another Hawaii turn quarter. They call it whatever social land. Or, uh, uh, this lime green Hawaii, I didn't own it now, like uh, some guy saw it in my Facebook in uh, Florida, and he asked me, it is flower. And I said, no, it's not enough chlorophyll to flower, but uh, I'm glad to give it a life. So he buy it from me, I send it to him to Florida, and he challenged me, he will make it to flower. The guy is a good breeder there, is, is a large breeder in, in, in Florida, but I think he, he, he can't keep it in, uh, alive anyway. That's my opinion. I, I, I will let you know, guys, if he will able the, to make it flower or, uh, or something. That's another Hawaii Southern Quarter. That's another one. That's another one. Okay, we finish now with Hawaii Turn Carter. Now, that's different shape from Hawaii. That's we call it hard leaf Hawaii. It's different in shape and color, and the the, the window is like uh, as we see here is dark green, like uh, mostly how uh, uh, Hawaii hard leaf is that way. Uh, that's Hawaii. Uh, Silver swear, that's variegated. That's not expensive Hawaii at all, like probably thirty dollar. But uh, I keep it for propagation, pro uh, to breathe from it, uh, to get some like some uh, variegated Hawaii. Uh, this one, that's a great plant for me. She gave me uh, a cross breed here. Uh, I will show you like later on. Uh, her offset is, is, uh, is beautiful, is really beautiful. Uh, that's a species, by, by the way. That's uh, Hawaii Optesa uh, variegated, Vinitusa. That's one of her uh, babies. 
I call it here red vine because like it's, it's, it's like a beautiful plant, like uh, uh, the, the vine is red and uh, it's really nice for me. I like it. That's her mother, by the way. That's her mother. And the father the one like uh, I, I, I mentioned before. Uh, that's how we see you. You can see some windows that always have some teeth. We call that teeth. The white thing is in the, in the window, we call it teeth. And uh, the Hawassi has a price for it depend on uh, the window, how it's complex or how it shows uh, uh, market on it. It happened to be this one, some teeth on it. That's my breed, like uh, I give her number 150. I didn't name it yet. That's uh, correct, uh, uh, variegated. That's the species, but like uh, it's variegated. Uh, I keep it for breeding. Like uh, it will, like I hope it will uh, cross breed here and give me a new variety, nice variety. Uh, I like to manage you here. That's a tosa variegated. When you have a plant is variegated, if offset coming from the variegation side, probably coming uh, uh, all white or all variegated. When the offset coming from the green, si green side, usually coming green, all green. That's not for Hawaii, for every plant too, like uh, Echeveria or whatever, like. Uh, uh, that's, uh, I kept this picture or that image like to show it to you or to let you know uh, how is the variegation offset work. That's uh, Hawassia Bitka. That's Hawassia Mahagany or many variegated. That's the baby one, but like uh, it have beautiful marketing window and the window is large. Uh, it's very nice, like uh, uh, mahogany. And as this one, uh, this Awesia, uh is not the expensive one, but the window on it is beautiful and many detail on it. I, I keep it for breeding. I have about five uh, plants from that for breeding. I like to try to grab some. Uh, mark in the window for another plant. Uh, that's how it's uh, uh, many variegated. Okay, that's tiger big mare. That's a beautiful plant. Uh, uh, and uh, I don't know where, who breed it, but like, uh, I, I think it's a Taiwanese or Japanese breed that plant, but I'm not quite sure what is the source for it. That's another video. That's uh, Venezuela. Uh, uh, this one mirror ball. That's uh, 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 is not expensive plant. Like uh, probably twenty five. The cheapest plant you can find it in Hawassia. But like uh, uh, the reason I have it here, I like to let you know. Like when the plant is uh, stressed. Uh, the color can change to red. Like usually, this plant is always green all the time. But like when like uh, uh, we hold the water on it or the temperature change, it can change that color on it. So that's why I tried like to explain uh, how the, the plant when it's stressed, the horse especially when it's stressed, the color totally change to red or pink. Uh, that's uh, my breed. That's Octusa. That's uh, Aosia Ventusa uh, hybrid. That's uh, that's another mahogany variegated. That's I like this plant because in anywhere you look at it. It's beautifully perfect. I think that's one from the side, and another as the second image, it will be from the top. Uh, it's just perfect shape in 
any coronary rock acid. This one plant uh, and is not expensive plant is about 40 bucks, 35 bucks or 30 bucks. Uh, that's how is the mahogany variegated. That's uh, obtusa. Uh, that's one. Uh, uh, this one uh, uh, number 150. I was talking about it uh, before with the seal, but it was green. It was an under stress, and when it is stressed, it coming like that, like. Uh, Red, beautiful, shiny color. But before, I think the last, uh, the, the, the bottom leaf, it's still green. But uh, probably after that, it will be red. Here it is. That's uh, number 150. Yeah, it's totally green. Black green, actually. Or green black. That's what's your ice flow. That's another uh, mahogany variegated. That's one, that's no tiger big me with uh, a little offset here. Uh, the, the, I like tiger big me because it's little straight, it, it brings it like a red, red. The variegation part on it brings it really red. That's what I like about it. That's uh, obtuse Maggie. That's uh, red tiger. I call it red tiger because that's uh, uh, the guy he breed it. He didn't give it name. The guy he breed it, he breed it in Taiwan, and he didn't give it to me. And I buy it from him. He shipped it to me from Taiwan. Uh, this horse is beautiful one because uh, is uh, this part on it. It's 13 centimeter wide across. So I'm expecting it will be like 15 centimeter, 16 centimeter when it grow. So it will be a huge one. That's another Hawesia. Another corrector. Correct after it been. Uh, I, okay, guys, I'm sorry I'm going uh, so fast because. Uh, there's lots, lots to see it after that. That's my breed too, and named. That's my breed. That's my breed. That's Obtusa Lontemi. That's uh, Love Lady. Black Major. That's uh, I will see many. Okay, that's father. From many of two that I have, and of course that's brand called Black of uh, Black of two variegated. That's uh, species badia. Tiger me. Venezuela, Venezuela, mahogany. That's nice mahogany. It's very big Hawassia mahogany. And uh, this, I think, about nine and a half centimeter, and which uh, is very big size for, for uh, Hawassia mahogany to be uh, that size. That's a name Hawassia. That's uh, Offset from the one uh, I just said, black of two, so one of, of his offset. Uh, this horse, I'm alive, or Maltefora, that uh, I saw, uh, I visit uh, uh two years ago, and he decided to give me that. It was a very little one. Uh, they gave it to me as a gift which uh, I accept it is, is very gentle, man. But now it is grow and uh, I, I try to share it with you guys. That's how was the Amada variegated. Uh, okay, in that photo, I like to share with you 
how uh, the root of Hawassi, how thick and uh, long. That's the healthy root for Hawassi. Uh, that's moonlight. That's uh, about uh, 14 centimeter wide, uh, the back. That's Hawassi many variegated. Another many variegated. That's uh, the name in, in, in the top. That's uh, I bought this one uh, from England uh, to breed from here, which I didn't breed it yet because I didn't have a chance. It flowered for me a couple of times, but uh, uh, in my breeding system, I didn't like to put any, any, any two plants together. It has to be like uh, I choose uh, some characteristic from this one to another one uh, to breed, but like I didn't bring any two flowering Hawassia, I just breed them. I didn't breed them, that's uh, in full size. That's another Hawassia many of two same marble. Another many. Here it is. That's uh, when I breed, I'm very proud of it. Uh, uh, it's not very gated, but the color, the shape of it, uh, I really, really love it. Uh, this one, I'm really, really, really proud of breeding this one. And then the one that I said, like, I have one to breed me too. One, it was pink. I read it red vine. That's her sibling. That's another house of Marvin. That's Kubiri or Kubrai. That's uh, Kubrai hybrid. That's Kubantina hybrid. That's uh, Hawassia Cobrai. Yeah, this is the one I'm talking about. I love the shape from it, like uh, from this angle or, or from the top. Totally perfect. From the side or from the top. And it's not expensive, it's about 35 dollars. Young one. That's how it's even to say. The same plant. And that's uh, that's some more sky. That's the uh, yeah, that's in more sky. Uh, okay. And that's my breed too. That's my breed. I didn't name it yet. That's my breed. That's my breed. That's I was here many. That's uh, another uh, Trincotta. That's the Amanda. Another Trincotta. Okay. That's my breed. That's my breed. That's blue diamond. That, that's my breed. That's uh, number 150. Uh, like when I, I grow up now, this picture, at, uh, I took it like two days ago. Okay. Okay. Now we start talking about uh, now we saw how is the Hawassi, how it looks like, how many variety. Of course, I didn't show some species. Uh, all the Hawassi, I see it here. It doesn't, uh, two or three, it does exist in the wild. But like all that, I didn't believe they would survive in the wild in a way. So we're talking now, we start talking about cultivation and breeding and uh, stuff like that. With the nature, they are very, very particular in about their habitat. The species change as the habitat uh, uh, differ uh, as well. 
surprising when you get all these species and you start to cultivate them, they're all doing well. All of them, they will do well. Uh, if you consider like the, the feeding habitat and everything about in, 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 in cultivation, you are uh, doing well, very well. In general, how is it can grow in any, any well-drained soil? Uh, it needs good drainage media is essential. The most common species naturally found, you can find it in rock cracks or under cover of, of uh, vegetation. The species of Hawesia are rarely found under uh, a dense canopy of larger plant like a tree or something like that. And in the wild, we should, if we look uh, to the Hawesia, we should look in rocky setting or in area of shallow soil. Plants that are established will then full exposure of sun, and that's when uh, the, the color, as I tried to manage before to you guys, it changed from green to red or pink. Uh, that's because they are exposed uh, to the sun. Uh, the Hawassia can grow in heavier soil, soil if there is less watering. Root are uh, at the matter of uh, or the heart of the matter or, or for Hawassian road. Roots are heading from view, but uh, like any inexperienced uh, grower can uh, look uh, at uh, Batet Hawassia and obtain uh, a good idea of root heads or root system it has. I, I believe in a plant too. Roots are affected by many factors. Uh, riches of the soil, pH, the soil, the pH, uh, texture, uh, uh, and uh, the aeration of the soil or budding media. Uh, to grow Hawassia in shade, uh, the result always an attractive because mostly of the, all of the Hawassia, uh, like uh, the one you see it now, if I grow it in shade totally or low light, it will be uh, green and white. The dark color, it will be green. Uh, the pink one, it will be white. That's if I grow it in low light. But like if we grow it in, 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 uh, in a stronger light, on a little sun, it will bring the color, the beauty, it will appear. And the color will uh, uh, show off. Uh, yeah, like if we grow it in, in, in a shade, it will all be green. Kenny, and do you mind if yeah. I interrupt you there? Sure. Um, are we supposed to be only seeing the cultivation slide right now, or is, is there supposed? Are you supposed to be showing us a different slide? No, the cultivation. Like I'm grow, I'm, I'm talking about the light. Like if we grow it, like in dim light. The, uh, the slideshow actually. Like, is there supposed to be uh, more slideshow with text on it, or is this the slide that you're showing us? Is that the only slide that you have? No, like after that, I will talk about breeding. After that, I, uh, I will talk about seed and cutting and uh, root breeding. And uh, but it will be like uh, no rating in the slides. Like oh. it, it will be like an, uh, a title, and I will talk because I didn't have time to write it. All. Oh, I see. No problem. I just want to make sure there's no glitches. So whatever we're seeing is the correct slide, right? That's right. Okay. Yes. Thank you. That's all. Okay. No, no problem. Yeah. Uh, the Hawassia, like uh, a thick color, usually uh, it range from nine to 11 uh, luminance. Hawassia burn if suddenly introduced to brighter environment. That's, I believe, all succulent too. Like if we get it from dark, you put it in, uh, 
uh, in the full sun of uh, greenhouse, you will see the full sun, of course, it will uh, be, I will see as the same. Uh, they will darken quickly if uh, they are moved from dull quarter to more uh, ultraviolet light. That's, it will be burned, it will be dark, uh, darker very soon. Uh, we're talking about the cultivation, like, uh, what is different than many circulants? Like, I have a chaveria, like, if I feed them today, fertilize them today, I see the result next week. I always say no. If you fertilize Hawassia, the whole year, this year, you see the result next year. So fertilizing this year or feeding this year, equal beauty for next year. Uh, uh, the feeding equal strengthening, and there is no sense in waiting. Like okay, like uh, some the horse usually it will grow at uh, mature size in four years, but with correct feeding and correct watering and correct environment, you can get the horsea from seed to flower or multiply in one year. That's if we, if we do correct fertilizing. Uh, watering, uh, we usually water Hawassia uh, for a regime like uh, five to six days, like one to two days, it has to be very wet. Three, four days, uh, even moisture, one to two days dry. So you choose the soil or the media for that reason, like one, two days wet, one, uh, three to four day moist, one to two days dry, fully dry. That's about the watering. Uh, if you water, break uh, one deep watering, like you will uh, lead to root loss and the stem will rot. Mm -hmm. And that's about watering. Otherwise, uh, you stop watering. If you grow it in a greenhouse, you stop watering in, in, in winter and it will be okay next summer, uh, next spring. Tim. The stem of Hawesia, uh, it appears uh, after the leaf die. Uh, and the root, the problem with it, the root, uh, it develops under the living leaf. Like if we see this area here, is a, a, a root one of the volume. Here another root one of the volume, and here another root one one of the volume. This part it can carry disease with stem. This part of the stem it can carry disease, or it can rot. So when we change the media, we 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 trim that one, that part of the stem, and any dead root like this one here, dead root, we trim it, or any dead leaf. So that's what clean the bottom and avoid any rotting uh, hawassia or any rot, uh, develop any rotting for the plant. That's about the same. Soil mix. Uh, we're coming to soil mix now for hawassia. As I said, in general, uh, hawassia can grow in any nearly in putting mixes based in, in the loamy soil. Uh, the essential requirement is like uh, good drainage and that's all how it's at need. Just a good drainage and uh, the soil it will, uh, uh, will be okay for house. 
after that, we come into fertilizer. Uh, I grow uh, my hawassia in organic media. My fertilizer may be different of uh, you. If you grow it in hawassia or organic matter, uh, media, I have to provide all elements in chemical form. So they are available uh, to the plant. Uh, I use uh, generally tin, uh, 52 tin, with some trace elements like chelate iron uh, or chelate iron, chelated iron, or chelated magnesium, and chelated zinc, chelated copper, and boron. For seedling, up to six months. I use one fifth to one tenth of recommended dose every two weeks. If you're going to use 1050 to 10 fertilizer, please be careful because uh, uh, phosphoric acid in high number, number 52, which uh, will be poisoned for a, the plant if we apply it too much, will be toxic to the plant. And uh, after age six months, I started which uh, gradually uh, to 6, 11, uh, series, uh, series 1, with some trace element. Uh, during this growth, I change the fertilizer totally, if necessarily. Like, for example, this type of fertilizer, I didn't apply it when I sow the seed, or the plant in flower, or the plan try to bring the stem flower. Totally, it will be different fertilizer because each cheese, each cycle in life in Hawassia have a special fertilizer. I, I'm sorry to say that, but oh, for this expression, but like, uh, for example, if uh, when my wife get pregnant for my first child, uh, I went to the doctor and I asked, listen, she eat for two what kind of food she eat. And he described me like a calcium and this and that. Same thing for the plant. When the plant is right with some flower or uh, it's half seed bark, everything will change. Fertilizer, it will be changed. Because the, the plant need is different than growing or the plant need different than like uh, uh, seed germinate. Uh, and uh, for example, too, if transfer the plant, uh, it has to be like the fertilizer, I had to change it at that time too. That's all about fertilizer. We come in now, I think, to the breeding. Yeah. Uh, this uh, the question I am usually asked because I have two group guys, like one for Hawassia and one for Echeveria and Hawassia. And many people ask me like, yeah, okay, which work better? Uh, from seed breeding or from cutting? I usually say to them, if you are a breeder, the answer is both. You have to do both if you are a good breeder, because uh, because if you breed from seeds, uh, it's like you're you're rolling the dice. A sexual uh, reaction here between the, uh, the, 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 the pollen plant and the other plant and genes here come together and you never know what's coming up. And there is no uh, two plants from seed production uh, come in the same. It, it will be different, but 
as a breeder, you will look at the character characteristic you look at it, the market you like it, the color you prefer, and you hold that uh, plant. And this plant, it will be a mother or a father uh, for next one. So you have to choose, so you have to do uh, the seed breeding to choose a plant to develop new variety the way you like it or the, the way you prefer. And then after that, when you have that plant, you can do, you breed it with beheading, with leaf breeding, with the way you can make it a few more from it. So you have to be, you have to, to do both seed and cutting if you are a breeder. Because everybody like, uh, have a different taste in horse. Okay, I will see an opposite type. Uh, now, if you see figure one, I will talk later on about uh, all of them, but figure one, is like uh, offset, it's quite clear. It's easy to take it off. Uh, the, the, the plant by itself, it is still intact with a good shape. And you have another seed. Figure two, uh, by the way, that has not been reported before. In figure two, you see here, one seedling tried to come between the leaf and another seedling coming in a stem. That's it hasn't been reported before. The seedling coming from like a stem coming and carry one, carry on top of its seedling, it, it, it doesn't happen before. Or it happened to somebody and he did report it, but I, I, I'm not aware of it anyway. I didn't see it in any book I read anyway. And the same one plant here, uh, the seedling in, uh, coming in, in a stem and another seedling. Uh, that's about that. And after that, we'll talk about, uh, yeah, that's the side one here. It's easy to remove and everything is, uh, will be intact the, the same. And that's, uh, uh, some, see, some seedling, it, it will form in the flower stem. It happened usually after the last flower happened, uh, it start for uh, uh, seedling in, 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 in the flower stem. This one image I ask you guys is only one image I didn't have on it and I didn't have a copyright for. But I brought it to you because I thought uh, it will help the presentation. This one uh, is not belong to me. Uh, as you see, like uh, in uh, flower stack, uh, it can form a horse. It usually like uh, it take about two months coming to the top side. And after that, you can uh, take it off and you plant it and uh, it will form a plant. And if you wait little uh, after that, you can harvest the, the bottom one after another a month or two and you can uh, plant it. Uh, okay, that's one close up with the uh, stem with a little plant on it, try to, uh, to do volume. This is the same. Uh, seed. Okay, uh, growing seed 
drone hawasya from seed is challenging uh, in the, the longer term as is not very difficult to obtain uh, seed. Seeds are not under any special uh, restriction regulating importing across the international border. Seed can also be produced uh, from uh, the collection. By propagating Hawassia from seed is very rewarding as it's offer the potential to produce a new stunning hybrid, or at least something you can call, yeah, I breed them, that's my own breed. That's the beauty of breeding hawaii. Okay. Now we we'll start talking about seed and how, how we we'll get the seed now. First of all, we have to have a hawasia uh, with flower stack like that. That's how it looks like it, the flower stack. And that's a close up. Uh, uh, to the flower. Now, the flower part that's uh, we was talking about it. I think somebody asked like last uh, meeting about the flower part or something. Or how the flower work? How the pollination work? Uh, this uh, uh, I did that to explain it to you. Uh, what is the flower consists of? Evil, the bottom one, and the female part called pistol or pistol. Excuse my language, guys, if I didn't pronounce it right. But I write it here called pistol or pistol. And the pistol contain ovary that's where the seed is developed and stigma where the pollination is happening in that part. Uh, the male part called stamen, and the stamen, it has two parts. Anter, which that part is the yellow, like powder, and the other part, it carried it called uh, filament. To pollinate it, we have to get the anther to stigma. It has to be done by uh, insects or brushes. If you didn't get that part to here to there, it will be not pollinated. So the, the anther, it has to come to stigma by two ways, only two ways, in fixed or brushes. The beetle is, uh, uh, the beetle like, uh, uh, I don't know what a cool leaf or something for, for the flower. And that's the flower part. After the pollination, it happened, it uh, produced uh, seed, like uh, the ovary will swallow, the beetle will fall off, and that's the seed bud over there, like all that seed bud. Uh, I bought like, I get like straw and I cut it and I put the seed bud under it uh, because when the seed but oh the, the seed is ripe it is open and disperse all the seed like if it's not covered by uh, by straw or uh, plastic deep plastic it will the seed fall off and you can't find it anyway so i have like uh, to put like straw 
and I prefer white one like to be look able to see what's inside. Like some like straw, like red or blue, and you can see whatever happening inside. Okay, we're talking about uh, uh, how was the pollination? So in order to understand how was it, like I explain it, but like uh, how was it, what I see is, I uh, didn't say it yet. How was it, is uh, uh, sterilized, self sterilized. It has to have another how was it, uh, to pollinate. That's why it's so many diversity in the house here. And if you get like a mother plant, like if you get two siblings from one plant and you try to pollinate it together, uh, the, 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 the genes will be too close. They don't, they don't accept the pollination. And uh, what is, uh, I have to say it here, uh, the flower open today, Next day, the, the pollen will be ready. And after a day, when the pollen ready is already, it will be ready. So like you get one, one day old to pollinate it to two days old. But if you need one day old to one day old, it wouldn't work. It has to be one day old to two day old. And then the pollination, it will be having correct. That's uh, about uh, pollinating how it's. It's timing too, like, uh, Uh, between breeding. Okay. And after you have the seeds and you have germina germination having and you have to, to record that like Usually, uh, the one top left here is my logo. The one in the top is the, is the pollen. The one, one except the pollination, uh, the mother, uh, the one uh, carry like uh, the seed. And that is the result. So I bought it. In, in, in a certain way, uh, uh, after that, if I want, like, uh, uh, how I did it or, uh, or something, because I'm 71 years old now, like, I didn't have good memory anymore. Uh, I can go back and pick a lot of it. Uh, mostly the ag agriculture, what they use, they use something like a coal pea, PPP, 120 PP, 170 uh, PP. P, it's mean various generation PP, second generation and number. It's good for them, but like uh, what they do, they would like apples, they measure how sweet it is and they record it. How big the size of this apple and they record it. But I didn't do that because I didn't have this uh, information. I didn't need this information. We, we breed for beauty. I breed for beauty. For that reason, I bought like my house yeah, uh, to see the beauty of it. I didn't breed for weight or sugar contact or size. I didn't breed for that. I breed for beauty. So I developed the system uh, to go and if I have grandfather, grandmother, I will put it to, but I don't. I have uh, the father and uh, grandmother for Hawaii 106, but I didn't put it yet. But like, 
I, I breathe for beauty. I didn't breathe for weight, for sweetness, size, shape, or height. I breathe for beauty, so I develop that. And that's another one. I said, I'm proud of it. That's uh, mother and father and this one. That's, I love this one. I, I really love it. Okay. Now we're talking about uh, beheading. How I can breathe uh, from uh, we take the, the top part, we, we take the head off, we take the top part and we put it in the soil and it grew root. The reason I behead that one for two reasons. Uh, to get more Hawassia exactly like one, this one. And the other one, I felt. Uh, the plan to go in green. Uh, they start losing the variegation and they start to go green. If I wait until these uh, four leaves in the bottom die out, probably I will uh, uh, lead to a green house, not a variegated house. So I'll be headed uh, to get uh, more house here. From it, uh, it was successfully. I planned this one, and this the bottom one uh, gave me the three plants. One coming from the wide variegation side of the leaf, it coming albino. The other one totally green, and the other one came uh, variegated. It was successful, to be honest. Uh, this one too, another type of uh, uh, the same type of beheading. Uh, you take the top part, you plant it, and the bottom part, it will shoot three, four Hawassia. That's the result for uh, the heading. Here is one variegated, better than her mother, coming better her mother in variegation. One variegated, less than her mother variegated, and one here, a small one, green, totally green. So when you be heading, you get like a mixture, even variegated one, nice variegation, middle variegation, or totally green, or albino. It depends where the part uh, the Hawaii are coming from. Uh, root uh, reading. We can take uh, propagating Hawassia from root, like uh, Hawassia from root, it, uh, it is slow, but uh, it, it is very possible. The root needs uh, a bit of uh, the middle stem, middle stem like, uh, like uh, a little piece from the stem. Like if we cut the house, for example, from here, it will not uh, bring like uh, offset, but like it has to get like when we cut it, you take a take little part from the stem or, or it's the root from leaf because somehow it's your root it coming from the leaf. You take a little part from the leaf. Then when you plant the root, you have successful uh, rooting opportunity uh, to produce uh, uh, plants. Sometimes you do one, sometimes you do three, sometimes you do two. It is very slow, but it's rewarding. But the downside from rooting, if I take this root from variegated trancata, which this root it was from variegated trancata, it will bring all green. There is no root propagation, it will get you a variegated plant. It will be all green. And I did it once, I'm not going to do it again because that one, it took a year and a half to get the size. 
and it's not worth it for me <laughs> to stay one year and a half like to get the size. Uh, I did it once and uh, uh, I didn't do it again. It has to be the route you choose, like the thickest, biggest route, and you take a piece of a stem or leaf and uh, you try to put it two, two, three millimeter before the soil and you stop watering for a very thin days. And after that, you start watering uh, regularly, but like not like a horse because it's only root, no leaves to support, a little bit of water. And after months or two, it starts to show some like a little green after a year or something. You can, or a year and a half, and you can uh, take it off and you plant it. Or you can't leave it in the root. If one plant, you leave it in the root and it will like go on from uh, produce in their own root later on. But I, I, I personally, I really recommend. Okay. Leaf growing, it could be done, but it's slow too. It's faster than the root breeding, but it is slow. It's not worth it for me, but some people, I like even I didn't grow uh, it from Echeveria or other plant. I see people like, uh, they, they grow it, but like, uh, Five dollar plant that was a cherry or something, a cherry five dollar plant. They stay two years to get or a year and a half. Caring, watering, everything for a leaf to, 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 to the plant, which full fines. I said, man, like just pay five dollar and get a cherry or ten dollar. Like it's not worth it. For Hawassia, like uh, I did recommend it. Even the plant is much expensive, like some of us here, to $300. I didn't do it for me, like beheading is much faster for me. Beheading, I get the plant, plant it, the same plant, and I have three, four plants later on in a month or two. In five, six months, I can take it off, pull plant, and plant it. It's beautiful. But leaf root, I, I, I didn't do it. I did it, but I didn't do it anymore. That's it, guys. I think.